Hello, my name is Prathima Pandey, and I'm the Director for Office of Women's Policy, County of Santa Clara Division of Equity and Social Justice. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Nick Kawada, who is the Director for the Office of Census for the County of Santa Clara, also part of the Division of Equity and Social Justice. Nick, how's it going today? Hey, Prathima, how's it going? Thank you for making the time. This is going to be a short, brief conversation about a very important issue, the census. When you began the work for the County of Santa Clara almost a year and a half ago, you were, you were willing to collaborate with the Office of Women's Policy when we found out that women and girls are part of the hard-to-count communities. And you were probably one of the few people in the state of California who actually worked with our office to set up a women and census track. So I want you to, because you know, it's the Office of Women's Policy interviewing you, I want you to focus a little bit on that and let our listeners have that important message. Yeah, and, and first of all, it was not willing to work, it was excited to work with. I mean, the Office of Women's Policy has been one of our landmark agencies for a long time. I think for, for everyone who works on the census, we want to get, make sure that everyone gets counted. So why would we discount half of the population, the population that moves households to get to response? Because let's face it, this is not just a head of household thing. This is an everyone in the household type of thing. And we need our women and girls to stand up and be counted because for so long, communities of interest, women, girls, immigrant communities have all been misunderstood, have all been mis miscounted because we have not had a, an office that has led around, you know, nationally around the country, around the census, around civic engagement, like the Office of Women's Policy. So again, this was all thanks to the Office of Women's Policy. It was all thanks to the leadership of our Board of Supervisors who said census is important. And, and I think this is one of the things that we, we talk about um, around the census is really how do we engage with communities? We engage with communities through trusted messengers, people who are known in the community, people who already have that relationship. And our women and girls within these households are our key to making sure that we get involvement. Too long have we waited on the sidelines and waited for people to respond. They're the same people who respond every single time. We really need a, a tailored message with, no, with uh, people who are knowledgeable about that message to inform us to engage those populations. And it was because of the Office Wins Policy that we have those champions. Well, thank you. And I know I'm detecting a theme. I thank you, you thank me. But really, I want to go back to something you just said, the vision of our Board of Supervisors and the vision of our Deputy County Executive, David Campos, who brought together the vision of equity and social justice that, that combines offices that work with communities that live on the margins. And from that, I want to segue into asking you to share with us a little bit about hard to count populations and where are we today? Because today's the 22nd of September and I want us to hear from you about the urgency in our community to make sure everyone gets counted. So can you give us, a, give us your thoughts around that particular issue? Yes, and, and you know we have made great strides because of of, of our leadership, and, and David Campos and the Board of Supervisors were were integral to that. You know, unlike many counties uh, who face the same issues, if not even more severe issues in terms of hard to count uh, than, than us, have not invested in the census. We have now invested almost seven million dollars within the census uh, locally, and that's just a local investment. The state is also putting money. Um, you know, we have a state partnership uh, who also in engages uh, hard to count populations, as well as the U United States Census Bureau, who's actually doing the counting, who's, who's supposed to be the main entity that does this work. So there have been a lot of great partners, United Way, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley Community Foundation, give them a special shout out because they have been doing a lot of great work. But um, I think it really comes down to your first question. What is hard to count? Hard to count is not, you know, uh, income restricted uh, language barrier, uh, uh, people who live in multiple, ho multiple family households. It's all of those things. It's all of those things and, and more, you know? So when we're talking about things like, um, oh, well, they're least likely to vote. 
you know, that to be to be honest with you, it's like one at one factor and, and, a, and a whole slew of factors that make someone hard to count. And it really is any sort of barrier that gets in the way of of being involved with the census. And, and it's not a big thing. You know, the census is a 10 minute survey. You can do it super quick. But if it's something that you're not culturally aware of, something that you're not linguistically, ac- you know, linguistically ac- accessible, maybe it's one of those things that could stop you from taking the census. Now, on top of all of that, we have a number of different variables that have made this census particularly difficult. This is the first digital census. Un- up until now, we've had paper forms. So a lot of people have not been used to that shift, who don't have access to that shift, even here in the heart of Silicon Valley. A lot of our, 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 our uh, folks who are you know, part of our older adults collective don't have that ready access, right? So that's the first barrier. We've had a lot of anti-immigrant rhetoric from this administration. People think, you know, if I give my information to the Census Bureau, they're going to use it against me. No, Title 13 protects that information. It's completely confidential. And then we've had things like internally chaotic things like COVID-19 and trying to do a campaign around awareness during COVID-19, wildfires that prevent us from doing canvassing from door to door. And then, and then on top of all that, we've had a lot of internal struggles, struggles, legal battles about the census deadlines, about census operations, adding a citizen's question that was ultimately denied. You name it, we've gone through it. So it, it has been a difficult journey, but I am here today to tell you, despite all of that, we are being counted. We are the third highest counted county in the state. We are at 76%. 76.6 percent, I believe. So we are raising, but remember, even in the highest level of response, we would we are still lacking almost a quarter of us from from who have not responded. And, and granted, there are going to be some people who say this is not for me, okay. But for everyone else, for everyone who isn't counted, we are losing millions of dollars in federal funding for safety net programs for our schools our roads, for businesses, all these things that we will need in the next 10 years to get our fair share, it's happening right now. Yeah, yes, and that's such a good point because we're in the pandemic and how we respond to our communities depends on resource allocation and resource allocation directly relates to census. And you know, today is National Voter Registration Day, September 22nd. Around 2012, the effort began to recognize today as National Voter Registration Day. And I I say even voting and our ability to have our voice heard and represented depends on the census. So I really want to thank you for highlighting uh, the, the challenges, but the fact that our communities come really far and we're at a very high percentage that doesn't mean that our work is not done. And, you know, I want to shout out to Cecilia, who's both part of the Office of Women's Policy, as well as supporting the Office of the Census, who came up with us having a conversation that will make available. And one of the things Cecilia has been consistently asking and focusing, how can the community help? Now that we're what I would call the last mile, and yes, I ran 6.3 miles this morning, and so miles are in my head, But as we're in the last mile, what can you give us as nuggets from your expertise on how we mobilize the community? What can we do? I have to say that there are many things that people can do. And the first one is very simple. Bringing up census with your family and friends and roommates and anyone you know that this is still their time to respond. I, I think the number one reason people don't respond is not because they don't want to. They just don't know about it. They don't know why it's important. You know, millions of dollars in federal funding for the next 10 years, represent, representation in the House of Representatives, right? We, we live in a very contentious time. If we don't have leaders in, on, in Washington, D.C. that rep- don't represent our interests, we're going to be in big trouble. So this is our opportunity to really be, uh, be counted, be, be seen, right? And, and for, for communities of interest that are right on the edge, like, you know, Oh, these, 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 this community is so small. Why would we ever listen to them? If you're growing, like most of our communities are, you want to be seen. So this is our opportunity for everyone to be counted. It doesn't, it's not just for U.S. citizens. It's for everyone. Unlike voting, which is reserved for our U.S. citizens, the, the count is for everyone, no matter what your status, what your, who you love, what your lifestyle is, you are supposed to be counted. Even if you're here on a temporary visa, you're supposed to be counted. So um, that's, that's the first message I would give to your family and friends. The second one is 
We do have resources at secgov.org slash census. If you want to check out our website, we also have an awesome Twitter page uh, that will give you day-to-day -day breakdowns on how close we are to, to reaching our goals in addition to really great online events and other sorts of, 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 of events where we're actually there in person helping people fill out the census. Um, we also have, um, I guess, at Facebook and Twitter both have um, some really great messages, some from the 49ers, some from um, some other athletic uh, uh, organizations that you may know. So we're really trying to get everyone on board with the census. And, and, and there are so many different strategies to get people on board, but we have the resources to help you. The, the third way is, is this tool that we've been using called Outreach Circle. And, and this is a, um, available on the App Store. Um, that, you know, those, those things are available uh, for people to download. Outreach Circle is a great tool that we're using to send out census messaging. If you want to be a census champion, you've already filled out the census yourself, um, or, or you want to spread the message around census, you can download that app, and then you can find um, our campaign. It, it's SEC Census. You can then get messages that we have procured and tailor-made uh, usually through our, 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 our social media. So then you can send it to your trust, your, to your network and, and they trust you. So you are a trusted messenger. So, you know, spreading that wide and, and far is, uh, is a great message, uh, uh, is a great way to, to spread the message and a great way to get involved. Thank you. And, you know, what I would say to everybody who's participating with us today and listening to us today, the theme that Nick is talking about is trust and community. The reason for the Office of Census to be part of the Division of Equity and Social Justice is because we work with each of you in our community. We're all together in this. And so from a place of trust, if we can leverage our community so that we get our community counted, because ultimately getting people to respond to census is, is a community engagement activity that is community engagement on all kinds of fast track. And so everybody who's listening, everybody who's watching, we need all of us to work together. This is our chance. It's not gonna come back for 10 more years. You heard Nick say, vital resources for our communities are at stake. So I hope you'll take a moment and you'll fill out the census and talk to, this has been my mantra, Nick, talk to five people and for me, talk to at least three who are women. Any other last messages, Nick, as we close out? No, just, you know, I think there's been a lot of back and forth about how long you have until you fill out the census. Don't delay, fill it out today. You know, there, there is no reason to put off a 10 minute survey in a time when we're all sheltering in place. You know, you can access it online at mycensus2020.gov. Uh, you know, they also have phone lines available as well. Um, so, you know, make sure that you, you take the time today to, to complete the form. Um, it doesn't ask you anything about immigration status or social security number, banking information, credit card information, none of that is, is on the form. So if somebody comes around your house and starts asking for those things, they are not with the U.S. Census Bureau, okay? It asks you very simple things like, what is your identified sex? What is your race? Uh, do you rent or own your household? What are the names and ages of, of those living in your household? What's their relationship to you? Those very simple, basic questions. So if you have uh, you know, questions, feel free to reach out to us at the Office of the Census. Um, you know, tweet back at us, uh, Facebook us. We are, we are happy to always respond to, to any sort of inquiries about the census process. We don't have much more time, so let's make sure that we respond to them. We respond uh, with a strong finish here.